Since I joined Shinevik nearly a year ago, we have continued the transformation of Shinevik and the distribution of Zalando marks an important milestone in our pivot towards a portfolio with a larger share of younger unlisted growth investments. I would touch upon two things, our financial targets and our financial position and our investments in 2021. 20, uh, so our financial targets will remain unchanged after Salando has been distributed. This may sound a bit counterintuitive as our net asset value and our portfolio balance will look very different at that point. But hopefully I'll be able to shed some more light on this. First, we aim to deliver a TSR of 12 to 15% over a business cycle. This target is built up through a bottom-up approach whereby we assess the return, required returns for each individual company based on several factors such as geography, business model maturity, liquidity. We then aggregate these on a portfolio level and reaches the return target for Shinevik as a whole. And our return target remains untouched as the cost of capital for Zalando happened to be roughly in line with the portfolio average. However, it is our long-term goal to reach a portfolio balance that warrants an increased return target. And as we continue to invest in venture high-growth companies with strong returns, our growth portfolio's relative share of the portfolio as a whole will increase, and we will then have reason to increase our return target. However, that moment is not now. Second, our maximum tolerance for leverage is unchanged. Given the nature of our investments, we aim to have a low leverage, not exceeding 10% of portfolio value. We currently have a net cash position of 4.3 billion SEC and do not foresee entering into net debt territory over the coming 18 to 24 months. Lastly, our shareholder remuneration policy also remains unchanged. In 2019, Shinovic transitioned from an annual dividend to instead uh, generate returns through, uh, to instead pay back returns from our investments, generate our investments through the uh, extra dividends. Sorry for that. Uh, if the AGM approves the distribution of Salando, nearly 260 sec per share in dividends in cash and in kind <clears throat> will have been granted under this policy. We will continue to carefully evaluate our liquidity needs to ensure that we have an efficient capital structure also going forward. However, with a slimmed down and much more growth focused portfolio, uh, with more cash consuming businesses, what could be considered to be excess capital in our view has shifted. We therefore think it is necessary to have a net cash position going forward owing to three factors. First of all, it is crucial for us to maintain our investment momentum as we continue accelerating the building of our growth portfolio. Secondly, we continue to see exciting prospects both within our existing growth companies but also in prospective new investments. Thirdly, not if, but when a market correction comes, we want to have a strong financial position from which we can be buyers of long-term exciting growth businesses and not sellers. I will now move on from our financial targets to comment on our investments in 2021. In our current plans, we expect to invest somewhere in between the money put to work in 2019 and 2020, which gives a range from 2 to 5 billion sec. 
We are likely to again be slightly overweight in new investments relative to our framework as we continue to build a balanced growth portfolio across sectors, stages and business models. To fund the maintained investment momentum, we continue to reallocate capital in a disciplined and uh, dynamic way between our existing assets. For this purpose, Tele2 remains an important source of funding and an engine in the continued transformation of our portfolio. So, to conclude, Shinovic is in a strong financial position from which we aim to continue to deliver great returns to our shareholders through the continued execution on our strategy. Thank you. Thanks, Erika. Come and join Jorgi and myself over here. Now, Jorgi and Erika, you've given us uh, the insights into what will be driving Shinovic going forward. But we also thought it would be interesting to invite some outside perspectives. So we asked Jon Hanander, who is Chief Investment Officer at Nordea Asset Management, and Stefan Ward to pose a couple of questions. And the first one is from John, and I believe, Erika, this one is for you. I am uh, John Lanander. I work for Nordea Asset Management in Stockholm, where I work as a portfolio manager and also head of the team that invests in the Nordic, Finnish and Swedish equities. Now you plan to exit Salando, which is partially has been used to sort of deliver the balance sheet. Uh, Tele2 will offer dividends, supporting your funding for investment, but uh, how do you see the growth portfolio's ability to self-fund itself for future investments? Thank you, John. Uh I would say the ability is good. We work actively with our capital reallocation strategy, as we have alluded to earlier. This means that we are not only looking at new investment opportunities, but also actively looking into our existing portfolio to assess whether we can crystallize value at different stages. Um, I would say that the, our portfolio's ability to fund itself, it's related to the portfolio balance and the S-curve that Jor Jorgi talked about earlier today. So our intention with that is to have companies at different stages of maturity and different time to liquidity. Having said that, uh, even if we have Tele2 that, that provides uh, excellent uh, return uh, that we can reallocate to younger assets, but we've also seen proofs that we can exit uh, companies at an earlier stage or crystallize value at an earlier stage. For instance, the sale of bread uh, that Jorge also mentioned and the cash proceeds that we actually received as part of the merger between Livongo and Teladoc. Thanks, Erika. I think John also had a question for you, Jorge. Let's hear what he had to say. Many of your portfolio companies seem to have benefited during the recent period. If you take the food segment as an example, how do you work with your portfolio companies to secure as much sale as possible when the pandemic ends and some of our pent-up behavior might be different than to shop online? Yeah, I think um, it's very interesting to see that in our cohorts of uh, these new comp customers that we have acquired, uh, the retention factor is actually very, very high. People are used with the services after this long period and the frequency is increasing. So we are actually quite optimistic and, and positive when it comes to the ability of retaining these customers. The survival rates of those seem to be as good or even sometimes better than the other types of customers that we have acquired in the past. But of course, it's extremely important, as you say, to make sure we deliver superior customer experience uh, so that these customers actually will continue to use these products. But we are we're very optimistic here. I think Stefan Vård from Pareto Securities also had a question for you, Jorgi. Global Fashion Group has developed very strongly over the past 12 months. It's uh, fashion retail, it's emerging market, it's not growing that aggressively. Uh, can you describe how Global Fashion Group fits into your future strategy uh, for Shinebik? Thank you. 
Thank you, Stefan. Um, we believe that the operational performance of um, Global Fashion Group has actually been quite good for, for, for some time. But the company has not really been appreciated by the market until quite recently. Um, in the past, it has been undervalued, and we think that much of the value creation could actually lie in front of us, not behind us. So that's the first thing I would like to say. Secondly, we know and understand this type of business model since we've been invested in this space for, for many, many years. And therefore, we feel very comfortable about what can be achieved when a company like GFG is pivoting towards to have a higher share of, for instance, marketplace sales. And therefore, we are, we are comfortable of being a, a lead shareholder in a company like this. Of course, the geographical exposure might not fit exactly as with Shinovic's other investments or strategy. But then we have to remember that we also have mature market exposures within the global fashion group. So it's not black and white. So we believe it's a strong asset and we understand the sector. Thanks, Jorgi. And we have received a question from the audience, and it's about Tele2. And the question is that now that we've decided to hold on to Tele2, could we consider or support them if they would want to go into to things such as media and content? I think that's ultimately a strategy question for Tele2 and not for Shinevik. Um, we think that uh, Tele2 has a very strong position as of today. And that's why we supported the merger between uh, Tele2 and Comham. And we think that there's a lot of more um, to capitalize on when it comes to the merger of those two assets in really developing strong fixed mobile conversion offerings, offerings in Sweden. And I think that will be the primary, uh, pr uh, primarily be the focus for the company. But again, I think when it comes to different options, whether you should move more into content, etc., it's more a question for for the company. Um, but um, yeah, absolutely. Okay, I think we have time for one final question, also from the audience, and it's around the timing for uh, announcing the spin of Salando. Why now? Yeah, I think. It's, it's, of course, a very relevant question. I touched upon it a little bit in my introduction speech. I think, first of all, we see that the company is, is very strong at the moment. It's been a, a great platform for many years. But I think if we look at you know, the, the, the market reactions of, of Zalando now compared to one and a half, two years ago, it's quite different. So that's, that's the first reason. And we also believe that we have, uh, meanwhile, been able to deliver concrete proof points and value creation in the remaining portfolio of Shinovic. So you have these two effects of, one, the portfolio of the younger assets being much stronger now than it was before, and the fact that Zalando is actually stronger than ever. And therefore, we believe that it's very natural for Zalando to start its next journey without Chinevik as a lead shareholder and allow our shareholders to be direct owners in Zalando without actually having us as a proxy. Okay, I think that's all we have time for now. Uh once again, you can ask questions, uh, so please do so through the website. Uh, it's now time to move into our investment sectors. And I will start by having a chat with Natalie Tideman. She is a senior investment director in our London office, and she joined us uh, in January at the start of the year.